Well, hello, my lovelies. Today, I want to talk about using continuous light outside. For those of you who have attended my workshops and we shot outside, I always wanted to show you how I use continuous lighting outside. And up until recently, the only continuous lighting that I really had access to to use outside were kind of no name brands. For instance, you know, Chinese wands that you can get on Amazon. I've used those, I use those for light painting. I've bought different, just kind of, I think the brand is newer, N-E-W-E-R, those kind, and the color temperature fluctuates and it's never consistent, so that's a struggle. Continuous light that doesn't require power i.e. battery operated continuous lighting. And then you need continuous lighting that is actually strong enough to use outside if it's not nighttime or dusk, right? Um, so I really struggled with that. But I do, if you know me and you're familiar with my work, I really do prefer using continuous light. Now I don't use continuous light for action shots, clearly. So anytime that a movement is part of the shot, definitely use strobe or or a flash for that. You're not gonna be able to have your shutter really, really high and then be able to control the light per se. Until now, I have really depended on using my AD200 outside for fill or to mimic the sun behind if I'm in a location where the sun is gone. And as I stated in my last video, I live in a really hilly area. So we have massive hills some people might call them mountains, but I used to live close to the mountains. These are hills. And the problem, again, like I said in that past video, is that once the sun dips beneath that high hill, you miss golden hour. So you have no backlight. You have no low, golden, beautiful sun. So the only way to really mimic that is to drive a distance away so that we're far away from those hills and use the sun in its natural environment or just grab some artificial off-camera flash and try and mimic it. So until recently, really the only continuous lights that I use that are my go-to, like this light here, is been my Solix by Westcott. And I have three of them. Problem is, is that they are all powered, so they do not have a battery option to them. And the power cords that go into the back of the Solix, they fail, they fail. So I have three and two of them have failed. So now I'm left with one. And that one is kind of iffy right now too. And the problem with that is it's gonna cost me $100 each to purchase new power packs to continue to use them. I'll probably have to because I do use them inside for video and for portrait sessions all the time. I did decide, and I've been eyeballing this light for a long time. It's a light by Light and Motion. It's also known as Stella Lights. And this one is the CLX and I finally decided to bite the bullet and buy one. So for me, this unit was $12.99, I believe, and that's a pretty hefty price tag for one light. It doesn't come with any modifiers. It's got a little spot right here that you can put an umbrella in, and I thought, you know what? Good enough for me. Now, it does come with a Bowens mount. I don't do Bowens. So I don't even have a softbox or other modifier that I can use with it besides an umbrella. I really thought, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead, get the light, I'll use my umbrella, I'm sure it'll be enough. I'm not worried about it, and I'm so glad that I did. Okay, let's talk about this light. It's tiny, like look at how little it is. A person, an assistant can literally just hold it and point it, it's not heavy, they're not gonna get tired. I'm in love. Now the reason that I chose this one over the other ones that were available in the store was because I didn't want a hybrid. I didn't want one that was both flash and continuous light. I have flashes. I've got tons of them. I can bring them. They're super light, easy to use. I use my 8200 with the Mag Mod accessories. So this is my 8200 Mag Mod setup. This is my 8200 and it just clips right in with a magnet, shuts. There's enough space for two if you want really, really strong power. And then we have our magnetic diffuser that just goes right over top. And that is super quick and easy. It comes with a handy little 
lever that you can adjust the position of the light. So I don't need another flash. This is perfectly acceptable. Super inexpensive. Magmod kills it with their accessories. I'm happy with it. So what I wanted was I wanted a light that was small, wasn't big and heavy and required, you know, an additional battery pack that you have to buy that's not included. Um, I also wanted a strong light. So this one has 10,000 lumens. Although, you know, in the middle of the day, 10,000 lumens is not gonna overpower the sun. However, I like to shoot in really shady woods, shady areas, and additionally, you know, moving into the evening, I can use this as a hair light. I can use this to mimic the sun. So in this behind the scenes video that's coming up, I'm gonna show you how I used it to mimic the sun. And one of the benefits to shooting mirrorless these days, if you are a mirrorless shooter, is that what you see is what you get, right? So you look at the back of your camera and you go, oh, that looks amazing. And you just dial in your shutter, boom, good to go. And so I love that flexibility. I can honestly say that it surpassed my expectations. I am super thrilled that I got it. The price tag was atrocious for me because don't forget, I'm in Canada. What does that mean? That means that the $1,299 light US ended up costing me 2,000 Canadian. Just factor in the exchange rate, the duties and taxes, and the shipping, and I'm paying too much. <laughs> but, you know, I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. I'm gonna make a million beautiful pictures, so I'm super happy with the purchase. I am in no way sponsored, clearly, otherwise I wouldn't have spent that kind of money on this. Um, but I would really recommend that if you're interested in using off-camera flash, specifically if you're interested in using continuous lighting outside like I do, then take a look at light and motion. When did I, when did I realize that using continuous light outside was something that I really wanted to do? So one year I was in Portland and I was with my really good friend John Hartman who is a photographer from Wisconsin and he teaches light painting and I went there to attend one of his workshops and he and I had a plan we were going to light paint a person because we all know how difficult it is to light paint a person just because of the natural movement of a living creature and so we did that but then also after that we took that same model to the Japanese gardens in Portland which were absolutely amazing at this time of the year so we had red and orange and yellow and oh my gosh they were so beautiful um, I had a headpiece artist out of Seattle give the model a headpiece for us to use for the shoot and I just had such a vision and then once we got to the gardens it was so dark in there, I was like, oh no, I didn't bring any off-camera flash. I d it didn't even occur to me that in the gardens it was going to be so dark that I wouldn't be able to really create an image with natural light that wasn't completely grainy because I had to bump up my ISO so high. So John, being the pro that he is, pulls out his bag and pulls out this LED continuous lighting panel. Now granted, not the best you know, lighting panel for portraits, but he did school me that day very, very quickly on how impactful and wonderful it is to use continuous lighting outside. So from that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta use it. So I tried Westcott Ice Light, not strong enough. I know they came out with a second generation, still not strong enough. I tried a couple of Chinese brands, I tried things off Amazon, and there was never anything that I could get that would give me that buttery quality of soft light that I was, I was looking for. So I did a lot of research on light in motion and specifically this, this light, the CLX, because it was a lot of money, so I wanted to make sure I was making the right choice for my work, and I wanted to make sure that it would work. I'm going to show you the behind the scenes now and the images that I captured using this light. If you have any comments or questions, anything at all, please leave them in the comments section. And as always, please, please, please like, subscribe, hit that bell. It helps with the algorithms and helps me grow my channel. And let's get on to it. So for the first light setup, I put the Stella light behind Rory, camera left, but not directly behind her. I wanted to mimic sunlight in a way that it wasn't in the shot, but it was high enough that it really mimicked the sun. And 
it just blew my mind. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. I didn't need it to be really, really, really close to her, but it couldn't be that far away either. And, you know, I think that if you're looking for an additional light source that is going to really just kind of enhance your photography, this is definitely one that you might want to consider. The next look, I wanted to go ahead and put the umbrella on. I did have to bring the light in pretty close to her in order to get that really soft, buttery kind of light that I was looking for. But, you know, the location was really, really perfect for this in that I knew that what I was going to do with the edits from this, I was going to just adjust and edit the right side where the light was showing in the frame and create a little bit more of a magical look. So this shot here, you can see that I definitely cut out the light because portions of it were in the before and I made sure that I just edited it out and made it all beautiful and buttery.
in this next frame, I really wanted her to appear like she was walking. I told her to make sure that she turned her face slightly toward the light, and this is the result. I just want to preface this with the reason why I chose this location is because when I'm shooting at f1.2 on my 50 you really want to have that shallow depth of field so if you can find a location that has like a pathway that has foliage going all the way down either the left or the right hand side then it's going to create that amazing buttery bokeh. Now this next shot I really wanted to just do some like rather three-quarter length portraits. I just move my tiny little continuous light and I can actually just watch where the light falls on her, where it hits her face, and you can easily, easily just know exactly what the images are going to look like. And it's just so much fun. I just love it so much. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are gonna say, oh my gosh, that dress, that's amazing. It's actually my dress, like it's mine, I wear it. <laughs> and I just think that it would look so perfect on Rory. 